Hi, I'm Yardley Smith. You may know me as the voice of Lisa Simpson. And I'm here to improvise some voices for some cartoon characters I've never seen before. Just to manage your expectations, I am actually one of the only people on The Simpsons who really does only one voice. Once in a while I do an old lady, but um, that gives you some idea of how this is going to go. Great. All right, let's get started. Aw. <laughs> here we have a, a sad um, orange dragony cyclopsy blobby. Um, I, th I think maybe, you know, she sounds like this. My name is Iris. I want to play hide and seek with the other Cyclops dragon girls in my class. And they were like, no, Iris, your eye is too big. It's like cheating. So I'm just in here against the blue wall with my little dragon spiky spikes. And, you know, I'm kind of sad. I'm sad today. I'm a little sad. I cry a lot as Lisa Simpson. There are a few things I do a lot as Lisa Simpson. I talk to myself quite often. Like if you actually knew how often Lisa Simpson talks to herself, you would think, somebody help that girl. And I sing a lot as Lisa Simpson, which is tough because Lisa Simpson is right up here. Singing is all about opening your throat and to do Lisa Simpson, I close my throat a little bit. So I have about a four note range as Lisa Simpson, but they're all like, no, Yardley, it's great. You have great pitch, you're gonna be. I'm like, ugh, please knock it off. So to cry and also to laugh, to laugh, you, it's all like, it really is all in the solar plexus. And there's like a heart contraction that I feel when I pretend to be that sad, that I think makes the crying sound really authentic. The other thing is that as Lisa Simpson, often I would say at least 70% of the time when Lisa is crying, I, as Yardley am, I am actually crying. Like that's how much I connect to my character. So I can throw a little, uh, a little love, a little technique toward, I really you. Oh, hello. I'm a very, very tall sort of crane. I'm all covered up because I don't want to have any contact with you at all. But I hear you ordered a drink, so I have it right here in my syringe. I'll we'll call you Dr. Prick because you carry a big stick that has a big prick on it. And um, I like to think that instead of there being some sort of medicine in there, it's, it's a martini. <laughs> In a play once, I had to play all these different characters, and I played like a sort of fatty arbuckle kind of barfly. You sound like this. I said, hello, I brought you your martini. Which is, sounds a little sort of otherworldly, like you've revived this poor bird from the dead. But, you know, he, she does not look unlike he, she was revived from the dead. Hello, I hear you want, you like your martini. Stirred, not shaken. So I have it right here in this syringe. Really, so that's all right here in the throat. Um, and I remember, again, when I was doing that play, I had, it was about a five minute sketch and my castmates were like, Yardley, you're gonna wreck your voice. And somehow I didn't. But there's almost no actual um, voice to it. It's really guttural. Are you really in there? Um, hi. My name is, um, my name is Charlotte. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a unicorn of really long blue hair. Um, here's the thing though, I have this really ugly birthmark on my tummy. So I kind of thought maybe if I grow my hair long enough, I can like wear it in front and cover my, my birthmark. I don't think Charlotte would be like the big booming sort of unicorn with a big blue birthmark on her tum. Uh, I don't know, she doesn't look that way to me. And she's small, she's itty bitty. She could be from the South, you know, she could be like, I'm not really sure what state this accent is from, cause I, as Yardley, have done a lot of Southern accents. People are like, where are you from? I'm like, I was an army brat, leave me alone. All over the South. But yes, maybe Charlie's just like, you know, 
I, I, I just want to get along with everybody. I bring cookies everywhere I go. I like to hand them out. I think it's a great way to make friends. What are you, like a rat? Are you a monkey? If you were shown this picture in an audition, the guy would be like, really, really rough and tough, right? But what if he's like, you know, like Cockney, and he's, uh, he's like, what? What are you staring at? No, I'm not grimacing at you. You see how I smile? I was born this way, right? Well, I don't want to eat you. I don't eat people anymore. I'm a vegetarian. Yeah, I'm a vegetarian. Or maybe it's sort of like a, a fat Tony kind of type, right? Maybe his name is uh, Skinny Sam. And, uh, you know, I used to be kind of skinny. I used to be skinny. But uh, now that I don't rob so many banks anymore, I uh, just, you know, I sit around a lot. I just count the money. That's what I do. So, you know, I'm trying to stay like middle management. That's what I'm trying to do here. Yeah. Oh, Granny. <laughs> so, when I listen to Dan Castellaneta, to Grandpa, he kind of does this breathy, again, not much um, actual voice to Grandpa. So I say to Dan, Dan, could you do my lines as the old lady? Um, who, I think her, uh, what is her name? That's how often I do her. Like, literally, they've killed her off three times and brought her back to life because I do it so badly, they think it's hilarious. So I'll ask him to do my line. There's usually one or two, and then he'll do it, and um, then I imitate him, literally. So, all right. Let's see, what's, what's your name? What's your name? My name is, um, my name is, uh, Mary. My name's Mary. And, um, you know, they took away my license, so I'm like, that's okay. You cannot keep me down. And, uh, sure, I wear a helmet, but really, my hair is my helmet. My husband died, like, I don't know, 20 years ago. I'm all right. I'm not lonely. Look at me go. You can't stop me. Or she could be a smoker. My name is Mary, and, uh, yeah, they took away my license. And so, uh, I was like, you know what? Up yours. And I got a skateboard. And you know what else? I got sneaks to match my skateboard. And then I got a snazzy little top and a little helmet to match my sneaks and my skateboard. This is, uh, this is a worm. I'm a worm. And uh, I'm green. And uh, I'm a bookworm. Duh. Because I'm holding a book. And I'm a worm. But you know what? The P.S. is I can't actually read. This is a picture book. <laughs> I like to turn the pages with my tongue. This would have really, but I don't, you know, I just do that when I think nobody's looking. Maybe he would, he would sort of have a stuffy doze. If I mean, I really was to amp up the goofy doze, uh, I don't know. Now he's starting to sound like Carl on The Simpsons, that Hank Azaria does. Uh, he might not appreciate that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I always wanted to do uh, a Valley Girl on The Simpsons, where there's a girl, a character named Shauna. And I once got to fill in for Tress McNeil, who does the voice of Shauna. You know, like, the B is like, my name is B, Beatrice, but B for short. Um, I'm a lesbian B, and I live in the hive with, like, my wife and my 5,000 kids. What's great about the hive is great benefits. We have, like, we have great medical. We even have um, extra antenna care which is super good if your eyebrows are already growing on your antenna, you know. Also wing care. We have great wing care at the hive. What if the mislead on this bee is that she's really, or he is really like this teen punk prankster. Hey, listen, I'm a bee. My name is Bud the Bee. I'm smiling here, but I gotta tell you, this bucket of honey, super heavy, dude. It's super freaking heavy. So uh, if you could just take the picture so I could put the bucket down and then I could lay down in the flowers, that would be awesome. Ah! This poor little alarm clock. Um, if I could do like a good uh, Gilbert Godfrey or uh, Bobcat Goldthwait. <laughs> People! People! We have a problem! I'm missing some numbers! I'm missing number nine! But I think it got eaten by seven, eight, nine! Here's what's unfair. So this expression 
of course, wouldn't be the whole scene, right? It would just be a moment, hopefully, of this poor little alarm clock losing its whatever um, because it's missing some numbers. Maybe all the rest of the time, the alarm clock uh, is like, um, Hello, I am your alarm clock. I know I look uh, very analog and you prefer the digital, but uh, I'm very useful and uh, I can make a very big noise like this. Ah! See, that's very useful, don't you think? Because I know that you, when I go off, you do not like to wake up. Eh? You just lay there like a big slug. And so I can just, you know, maybe be so loud that you wish you could throw me against uh, the wall. Well, favorites, thanks so much for watching. Uh, it was fun for me. I hope it was fun for you. Ah!